how long do you think you could go without using social media? There's no denying it's become a huge part of our lives, some more than others, uh, but some people are now claiming it's actually bad for our health. The Royal Society for Public Health is calling for people to take part in a digital detox. For the whole of September, we'll be talking to them in a moment, uh, as well as somebody who says social media is a force for good. First, let's see what some of you had to say. I use social media every day, pretty much, really. Um, I use it for personal, keeping up with friends. I use it so much. I probably use it on a daily basis. Um, I use it because it's quite entertaining. I used to use it a lot a few years ago, but now I am going weeks without even logging on. My favourite apps would be like Twitter and Instagram. I'm not on Twitter. Well, I use Facebook. That's the social media I use. Yeah, I use Facebook. I use Snapchat the most. A social media detox would probably just make me feel completely cut off. I don't feel like I'd be able to have any contact with my friends. I definitely feel like I could do it for a week. Maybe even kind of like start with a weekend, do it for a week, but not a month. I've done six months off Facebook, so that's no problem. I think so, but not everyone's like me, I don't know. Would you go for detox? Would you be able to kind of switch off? Probably. Okay, well, <laughs> I don't know. I'm not quite so sure about that, but I would love the idea. I could do it. It would be, I think it's a good idea. Well, joining us now is Ed Morrow from the Royal Society for Public Health and Bex Lewis, who is a lecturer in digital marketing at Manchester Metropolitan University. Welcome. So what are you asking people to to do scroll free for September so we're asking people to give up all their personal social media use so that doesn't include work use it doesn't include instant messaging apps for the month of September that could be completely cold turkey or you could choose another option you could choose just not to use it in the bedroom for example because of the impact of sleep or just not to use it at social events so that you're not impacting both real world interactions but whichever way you choose to do it we think this could be quite beneficial for, for mental well-being for a lot of people why um, well, at the moment, we've been looking at this issue for a couple of years and um, talking to young people, we see people who are sort of attached to their social media feeds a lot of time, consuming a lot of stuff, which is a very curated kind of idealised vision of reality, kind of these perfect bodies, perfect holidays, people feeling very um, insecure and their kind of self-esteem is, is sort of suffering as a result of internalising all of this. So, so we want people to be able to separate away from that, sort of take a break, reflect and think, OK, what are the useful elements of social media for me and what are the bits which are making me feel bad. Very easy to make assumptions about who, who, who we're talking about here. One uh, Twitter message we got this morning from Cynthia who uh, says proud is 71 years old. Cynthia, I love social media. It's become my social life these days. I use it 24-7. Bring it on. Yeah. I mean, you know, there are people for whom, if anything, you know, more usage, you know, people may be a bit lonely and I, again, I don't want to make assumptions about, you know, people being uh, lonely when they're elderly, but... You know, there, there has it, a it's a form things. of community. My mum yeah. loves WhatsApp. She calls it WhatsApp. But again, you know, you can have those family WhatsApp WhatsApp groups, and it is a lifeline for a lot of people. And it's just it's another form of communication that that maybe people who are older didn't have before. And I think it's one of the. I spend a lot of training with people who say I don't do technology. I'm like, it's not really about technology. It's a communications channel, and it's about how you use it. It's if you focus on the social rather than the media of the social media world, mm. then that works really well. And it is really easy to assume that it's just young people, they know how to do it. I think it's really good being able to reflect on what you're doing. Um, I'd probably experiment a little bit more with smaller steps. Um, oh, so the rather go the whole details. Can yeah. I just ask you a practical question, Bex? You're, you're a lecturer, right? Mm -hmm. So you walk into a lecture hall yeah. and you lecture in digital marketing yeah. <laughs> uh, and you see someone looking at their phone or, or, or tweeting or I mean what, what, do you have a do you have a position on it um yeah we tend to have a conversation right at the beginning of the year with students about uh, when's a good time to have it on so we might do some exercise with them which we're encouraging them to look things up or to share something or they might experiment we've done exercises on Twitter where they're talking to some on the other side of the room and just learning how to use it in a professional way um, and, but obviously, if you're trying to give a lecture, then you kind of hope that they're paying attention you to what, what you're yeah. doing. <laughs> well, I, I mean, do tell them, but um, it's, you know, they're adults, so it's kind of they're yeah. a certain amount of responsibility. But it's thinking about the pressures, because um, part of my worry is that we focus 
on trying to fix the technology problem, where actually a lot of it is a cultural problem. The pressure to respond quickly, the pressure to do really well in exams, to get good jobs, by mortgage, all that kind of stuff is massive pressures on young people. And this allows a bit of space to let off steam and people don't always do it particularly well. So it's, it's the addictive quality. I mean, I'm on social media, you're not. You don't do social media at all. Not a lot, no. <laughs> um, well, so th there is a way. Is 10 that, hours or yeah, so there is a way of finding out how long you spend on apps. So for me, over the last seven days, I've spent five hours on Instagram, three on Twitter, two on WhatsApp. That's only seven minutes on Facebook. I mean, is that's that a, a day, problem? Right? That's, that's, a that's day 10 gone, hours. Isn't that's it? scary. But within a week, that perhaps isn't that much for a lot of people. And actually, when you're starting to get over sort of two hours a day, that's when we tend to think of it as heavy usage. And there is emerging evidence now that people who are heavy social media users have lower um, mental health and well-being and sort of um, more emotional issues than people who have moderate usage. Is that direct causation or is that a correlation? We're not sure. But we definitely think that there is an exacerbating effect here. But um, really, it's as much down to or more down to the quality of your usage is what you're actually doing with that time online than the amount of time. Are you using it in a way that's connecting you with people you wouldn't otherwise, which is beneficial, or are you just um, being made to feel sort of insecure by the amount of stuff that you're scrolling through? Do you think, Bex, that people sort of delude themselves that stuff they're doing is necessary and important when, uh, you know, in reality, if it just, as you're saying, if it just didn't happen, wouldn't matter. But it actually but, would make no, no difference whatsoever. Well, I think it's thinking about that whole idea. Does, does everything we do have to be useful? And does everything we do have to be productive? So sometimes, is it okay? I think I know I, I, I'm doing something unhealthy when I'm sat on the sofa. Oh, no, all I've done is do that for like a quarter of an hour. But I'm kind of now aware enough. So I have reflected quite a lot on how I use mine. And I'm like, do you know what? I really need to go to bed. Um, so it's thinking about how I use it. Uh, and I've just found it really, really beneficial. You know, I've, I've finished cancer treatment two and a half months ago and being able to connect with people who've gone through the same treatment. You're like, I've got this weird symptom. Is this normal? When someone else goes that normal, you go, oh, I'm going to stop worrying about it. Well, you see, that sounds such a, such a healthy, if you don't mind yeah. me using the pun. Yeah. I mean, it's such a healthy way to use social media. Uh, very interesting chat. Got people thank going this morning you. on social media. Which is <laughs> yeah, thank and thank you, you for sending in your messages. Um, Diana on Twitter says, it's good to use social media, but my only wish is that folk would put their phones away when talking to you instead of reading or answering texts. That's rude and unnecessary. It is. This is true. 947.